he stopped talking. So, <laughs> anyway. you know, he obviously lost the argument about the uh, about the corn, and uh, I don't think we need to decide which set of muscles he used when he, when he lost that uh, lost that argument. Anyway, okay. Um, Technomimi. I am not a computer guy. I had no idea. The only thing I thought of when I thought about the Mimi thing was the Austin Powers movie. So you're using computer lingo and all that stuff. That was, I have no idea about the computer side of any of that. But I, what I'd like to do, what I, what I offered to do with Richard and, uh, and share some things about what we're doing, I want to really talk to you about two things. Um, the computer side of it and uh, the PowerPoint presentation and the time chart things, but also the seven hours with the Bible. Uh, Richard did a series of TV programs over in Detroit several years ago uh, through the Bible in seven hours, and it was 14 programs, 30 minutes a, a shot, and they put together a study guide uh, in book form. And I thought that was really a neat idea, and I wanted to incorporate that in our, into our ministry of what we were doing. We had, I, I've been pastoring the same group of people for 24 years. We're in our 25th year now. And we were in, we were in an older building in Minerva, an old theater building, for 20 years, a lot of maintenance issues, a lot of problems with it, uh, so small community off the beaten path. We knew we needed to make a change. We knew we needed to do something different, so we put our building up for sale, and we were going to make a move, um, but we had to sell our building first. And uh, 2011, that happened, and we were able to purchase a building in a little town called Louisville, which is up closer to Canton, much more centrally located metropolitan area off of Main Thoroughfare. And so uh, we relocated. Prior to that, I knew we were going to sell our building and have a new place to, uh, to minister. So I'm thinking ahead, planning things ahead. I thought, you know, it would be nice to have a chalkboard. And so I went to auctions, I, you know, to, to the, school, the old school buildings going, going under and they're selling all the, the furniture and whatnot. And I bought two chalkboards for like 10 bucks. I bought a 16-foot chalkboard like that. And an eight foot. I said, one of those two is going to fit in our new place wherever it is. <laughs> so they were hanging in my garage, and we finally sold the building. And I saw it. Then I shared the idea with the guys. We have a really nice modern building. It had been cleaned up and a uh, really beautiful place. And they politely informed me that we're not going to hang a chalkboard up in the front of this brand new building. And I think, plus the fact they didn't want to see me scribbling with a piece of chalk, misspelling words, and writing things that they couldn't understand in the first place. So uh, plan B, okay, they don't want a chalkboard, but we've got this nice new facility, so let's, you know, we're talking about using the video and the pro projection screen and all that. I says, well, give me a document camera. Amy, being a teacher, she worked with a document camera. And uh, no, you really don't want to do that either because there's, there's things with the computer that you can do with PowerPoint and other things. And I'm not a computer guy, and, and I rebelled against that internally. I did not argue with the fellas. I thought, okay, well, you guys, you work with this stuff all the time. I have a hard time with email and uh, just doing the, the basic things. One of my passwords with my business programs and different things is I hate this thing. That's because it's easy for me to remember. And the kids can hear me screaming and yelling, uh, you know, where did that go? What happened here? And so, so I, was, I, I did not want any part of the computer. Well, as we moved and we relocated, one of the things that I wanted to do was do this through the Bible in seven hours, thinking, okay, we're going to get new people to come out. And so that got the, the, the ball moving to put up the projection system, get the, get the projector hung and all of that. And the first, the, the first year we did it, we used Richard's material. We used the book, and I basically just taught through that. We made the books available. We had between, between 18 and 22 people the first several weeks of through the Bible in seven hours. It dwindles as you go along. But it was just wonderful. We promoted it uh, in the newspaper, our radio program, just to give a strategic grasp of the Bible in seven weeks, basically. We, we met on Thursday nights, and we had, 30, we had a 30-minute session, then we'd have coffee and and refreshments, and then I'd teach again. We'd be through by 8.15. And, and we had cold contacts in this new, new area. We had between 18 and 22 people the first several weeks that we, that we did this, had a wonderful opportunity and had some folks stay in our ministry as a result the first time we did this. The next, well, the, the, as we did that, we put the verses on PowerPoint and put the verses on the screen as well as had the verses in the book because that, that way you can teach through the material rapidly when you've got people that can't even find the books of the Bible and so on. 
And uh, as I use it now, I do not put the verses on the, on the screen. I like people, to, like Brian said last night, to be able to see the verses in their Bible. Uh, but we did, did it that way. After about the third or fourth lesson, I could see how the thing worked. So instead of having other people do it, I was able to type out the verses and, and uh, we went through the whole program and it went really well. Um, as, we, as we work through the, the process, uh, I'm going to show you, uh, this is a slide that I used in the, in the second session that we just did recently. And I did a, did a, did a whole lesson, the first, the first week was the gospel and the Bible, and then the second session was, of that first week, was the time chart. So we did a, did a presentation, and this is right out of manuscript evidence, where you have the originals in the first century, and the majority text develops, and then out of the majority text, you had the, the Bibles of the Protestant Reformation with Luther and Tyndale and Cloverdale and Matthews and bishops and so on, and others down to the, the King James Version in 1611. And then, of course, you have uh, that, that coming through the, through the Protestant Reformation. Then you have another text that develops, the 5% of the old, quote, unquote, best older manuscripts, which then led to the production of all the modern versions and presented all those things and laid all those things out. And then, of course, then you have the, the New King James Version in 1979 when that was produced and so on. And so we, we put all these things together. The second session that we did, we, we bought a bunch of notebooks at, Sk at Staples. These are two bucks a piece for a, for a nice cheap notebook like that. And I began to produce the, the, the notes and handouts with my own material with PowerPoint and just Word documents. And so I would have seven or eight pages of notes and we'd hand the notes to the people as they came this last time that we did the program. This last time we did it, we, had, we averaged 14 people uh, for the entire seven weeks, new folks that came just off the street. The idea being presented that we were going to do an overview and a survey of the Bible in seven weeks and give you a strategic grasp of the Bible section by section. And people were fascinated and, and, and uh, responded positively, just cold contacts, which now I have opportunity for follow-up and different things as well. But we did this. Uh, and this was one of, the, one of the handouts that I had on the screen, but I have the same handout as we went through the session in, uh, in Through the Bible in Seven Hours. So that was, that was very profitable. Now what I want to do here is I want to back up. I want to back up to the first time that we did this. This is a chart that we got off of John Verstegen's website. And the first year I did, this, did the program, we had the, the full image of the chart. And we had, this is the prophecy with the mystery taken out. And then, of course, you can do transitions from one slide to the next. And depending on how you work from one to the other, you can say, here's prophecy, and you can walk through it. You know, you, there's a nation of Israel in the law program, and you, you know how the, how the whole thing is laid out. But then you can hit the, the transfer, and boom, there's, there's the mystery. It was hidden previously, and now is made known. And so that is the, that is the chart version that we used in the first time through uh, a year ago. This, and, and as I looked at that, it is hard for a person that is totally new to put all those things together, to grasp the information and see the flow of it. After, if you, I mean, you and I, we've, we've studied it and studied it and studied it. So after the first time through, back in 2013, I began to play with the, with the PowerPoint. I learned how to, how to do the slides and create the slides and some different colors and things. And I began to discover that, hey, I can, I can put together and I can create my own chart and draw the chart piece by piece. And you know, the first time you see the chart drawn out is when it really clicks. As you, as you trace and you walk through the verses, I can remember back in 1979 or 80, it was the first time I saw Richard use the chalkboard. It was, we, we, we had gone to one of the services at, uh, at North Shore Church in the side room there. It was a Sunday night service, and he taught on the judgments. And that was when Rick and David were, and Jody were all real little, and they were taking the offerings, you know, and all those, all those great days and great times. But I saw him put the chart up, and I had grown up with the grace message for years and knew, you know, the rapture and the second coming and was just began to began to study, but you know as well as I do, you've never seen it laid out step by step. And the impact of watching that unfold was tremendous in my life and in, in lives of others, and we, we've done that. But for 20 years, we've had, 
we've had the, the big boards that we've used. They, the, they, they open up the, the, the light chart that we hang, and uh, Ted Mara from California built me an easel and a, and a piece of plywood that, that opens and closes that I, that I used for years. You open that, and there, you, know, you unveil the mystery, and it, it's tremendous. But again, for new people, it's a lot of information to digest at one time. So I began to, to play around and experiment. And what I'd like to do from here is to show you the chart that I have developed as, uh, as, as it's unfolded in using the PowerPoint and the different things that are there and the, and the, uh, the, the tools and the, the animations and different things that you're able to do and draw the chart point by point. But this is the material that I taught the, you know, just, uh, just two months ago as we came through the, through the Bible the, the, in seven hours the second time. Obviously, the three natural divisions in God's Word. Time passed, and, and we're looking at these verses as we go. I'm just going to be going through these very rapidly with you. The chief characteristic of time past is what? A division in the human race. You can highlight the, 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 the points in the verses and the points you want to make with the different colors. But now, there's a change. But and now, both words of change and, and trans, uh, 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 transformation. You have a change, and the division is removed. And then you have the ages to come and the, the fulfillment of both programs. So we laid these things out. The little thing about the page numbers at the bottom, I was able on the screens to indicate the page numbers in the notes. So if I forgot to tell, okay, we're going to move on to the next the next page, it was already there. So it was just handy to do that. But then we, we took the Bible at a glance. when we used the Apostle Paul as our guide through the Bible in seven hours. I used, we got the table of contents and we used verses from the book of Romans right from the outset. Paul is a unique guy and, and he says more about the entire word of God than, um, than all the other people in the Bible because he puts the capstone of of uh, Revelation on it. So, the Apostle Paul in Ephesians chapter 2 lays out there's time past, and in time past, what's the chief characteristic in time past? There's the nation of Israel, the covenants and the promises that, made, that were given to them. There's the nation of Israel. Who's the other group of people? The Gentiles, the, the, the uncircumcision. And so you've got that division in time past. You can just lay the chart out. Where did the nation of Israel come from? They came from Abraham and the, the, the Abrahamic covenant. It concerns the earth. And you're, beginning, you're just laying the chart out piece by piece. And you're going through verses. And we went through verses in Genesis about the covenants and the, the, the land and the issue, of, of, uh, of, uh, the issue of, of the promises made to Abraham and the goal of, of the promises made to Abraham. The Old Testament goes on. You, the law was added through Moses and the, the Old Testament, the books of Genesis to Malachi. Now, this is very simple and very basic. Uh, you, can, you can add a lot more information. You can make it simpler. You can do so many different things with it. And I'm doing this in, the, in, in just a short 30-minute session. The Old Testament is basically you have the Gentiles and you have the nation of Israel, the division in humanity. The goal of the Old Testament is what? A kingdom in the ages to come. The issue of of uh, God reclaiming the earth. We began in Ephesians chapter 2 with the issue of the gospel that, that God's plan of redemption for man was just not the redemption of sinful man, but it was the redemption of his creation. In Ephesians chapter 2, we walked according to the course of this world. This world is on a different course than what it was originally designed in creation. And we walked according to the prince of the power of the air. air. So right from the get-go, we talked about not just redemption for man, I you know, gave the gospel, but the Bible is about God's plan for reclaiming His creation. And so, so these things are, are, are in the process right from the get-go. So you have the Old Testament, the goal is the kingdom, then you come into the books of Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, and the kingdom is, that was prophesied in the Old Testament is now at hand with Jesus and the twelve apostles. And notice where I put Jesus and the twelve apostles within that blue line because you're forming a group you know, the call out messiah's church is where it's within the nation so you have the ability to create the image of the lord jesus christ and, and his earthly ministry and the 12 apostles within the nation of israel the nation of israel also had in matthew mark luke and john the issue of the wrath to come john chapter or Matthew chapter 3, verse 7. The issue of the wrath to come, preceding the kingdom, and 
the Lord Jesus Christ in his earthly ministry in the books of Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John is rejected by the nation of Israel. He dies on the cross. And then you have the book of Acts. The book of Acts opens up and the Lord Jesus Christ spends 40 days with his disciples, ascends up to the Father's right hand and sends the Spirit of God down on the little flock. I mean, it's just the way Richard draws it on the chalkboard. I mean, and, 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 I mean I'm, not go I'm going through it quite rapidly, but I'm saying you can, you can put the things together piece by piece and section by section. And so you have prophecy laid out there. And as the book of Acts opens... The, the goal is still the Lord Jesus Christ and the second coming back to the earth, the times of refreshing from the presence of the Lord. And so you, you're, you're able to produce all these things. And the book of Acts, Acts chapter 3, verse 21, you know the verse. Uh, the times of restitution which God hath, what? Spoken by the mouth of all His holy prophets which have been since the world began. The issue of prophecy, spoken since the world began. And... That's God's program for the nation of Israel and for the earth. And yet, the kingdom didn't come and the wrath didn't come because God had a secret that he revealed to the Apostle Paul. And there you can unfold the age of grace and just, just work right through those particular issues. You have the, book, the books of the Bible at the bottom, just like it, it is on our color chart. You have the books of Romans to Philemon and, and Paul's epistles and the dispensation of the grace of God. The dispensation of grace of God has its own conclusion, the body of Christ in the heavenly places. And you see the issue of both the heaven and the earth being presented. After the body of Christ is taken to heaven, then you have the books of Hebrews to Revelation, the Hebrew epistles, and God turns back and begins to fulfill His purpose for the nation of Israel. You have the new covenant that is finally and fully put in place, and you have the nation of Israel ruling and reigning on the earth. And see, as you go step by step, you, you know what I'm saying, how much better it is to have those things laid out piece by piece. And the people were responding to this. We had two ladies that came to the, to the first session, and they were there every Sunday morning after that, just thrilled. And the one lady says she'd been saved for, for a couple of years, and she says, you finally taught me how to read the Bible. I, you know, I, I, got, I, I hear all the stories and the different things, but seeing the big picture. Tremendous impact there. So that is, that, that's the full vision, full version of our time chart piece by piece laid out that way. There's, there's other things that you can do. You can teach portions of it. You can, you can put things together in, uh, instead of piece by piece, you can cluster the pieces together. Time pass, you have, there's the division between the nation of Israel and the Gentiles. The kingdoms prophesied in the Old Testament. It's the goal of prophecy. But in the four Gospels, now you come, there's the, wrath of, there's the wrath in prophecy. And now in the four Gospels, Romans 15, 8, the kingdom of heaven is at hand. And the gospel message, the gospel of the kingdom, in the books of Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, you can highlight those things. And so you can teach things section by section. You can use a portion of the chart and not, use the, not, not have to teach the whole thing and have all of that information up at one time, which is more confusing. You can centralize and, and just take bits and pieces of it at one time. Then you can also put, and this is what I did, you can put the little flock there in, in the bar. And by the way, all of these boxes, the red boxes there, the kingdom of heaven is at hand, are just text boxes. I'll show you at the, a little bit further along as, as we go through. You can add a text box and then put color in it. You can you know, change the color of the text and so on and highlight different things. And when you're in the four Gospels in Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, you still have the division. You're still in time past. And you cover those things that way. Then you can move into the book of Acts. And you see that was a different transition. There's different transitions that you can use. You can fold open things. You can use bars and you can spin things around and all kinds of different things. That's a, that's a bubble uh, transition. The subject is prophecy. Kingdom prophesied in the Old Testament kingdom at hand in Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. The nation of Israel stumbled, but they didn't fall. And in the book of Acts, you have the issue is still Bible prophecy. The kingdom is now offered. It was at hand in Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. As the book of Acts opened, it's not the beginning of a new program. It's the continuation of Messiah's church. And you're running, you know, Messiah's church all the way out into the kingdom with the, with the different colors and things there. 
um, as the book of Acts opens, you're still in time past and God's program for that. As, we, as I taught, now this is a slide from our midweek services in the book of Acts. And as we studied Joel's prophecy in Acts chapter number 2, Joel's prophecy gives um, Israel the big picture and, and Peter is laying out where the nation is in their last days. Joel's prophecy has three parts to it. it the goal is still the kingdom and uh, the, the fulfillment of, of prophecy. The first part of Joel's prophecy is what? The Spirit is poured out. That's just a text box. Like the Spirit poured out on the little flock. Notice the position of the arrow. It's not the nation at large that gets the Spirit. It's who? Just the little flock. The second element of Joel's prophecy is the day of the Lord and the wrath to come. The sun being darkened and the moon into blood before the great and notable day of the Lord come. And then the third element is the second coming. And you can teach that and, and use the verses and illustrate just a, a certain portion of Scripture. But you've got the chart there, a simplified version of it that is not giving quite so much information and you can focus on one aspect of it. And of course, Peter, on the day of Pentecost, the issue is still prophecy, isn't it? And as Peter is ministering, he's looking toward the coming wrath and the coming kingdom. But the wrath didn't come and the kingdom didn't come. What happened? The dispensation of the grace of God interrupted the prophetic program. Peter didn't know about the dispensation of the grace of God and a secret coming for the body of Christ in heaven. So Peter's not ministering with those things. So then you take it out and you go back to your study in the book of Acts. So, I mean, there, there's just a number of different things that you can do with it. Um, I'm, not, I'm not exactly sure where we're at here. Um, just another series of studies, same kind of thing. I bet you this is where I'm talking about maybe the Hebrew epistles. Oh, the, the fall of Israel. That is a different shape. The, the, and, and you're going to be, talk about the element in Romans chapter 11, about the stumbling and the fall and the diminishing of Israel. That the nation at large in blue um, was set aside by God and their program faded. And their future was interrupted. And because of the fall of the nation of Israel, you have the new program. Through the fall of Israel, salvation goes to the Gentiles. All different ways that you can convey and communicate those things. Um, that was just a transition from prophecy to mystery. That's just the whole chart where you can present, here's the prophetic program, here's the mystery program. And as you move into that, you take the mystery program out and prophecy continues. All these different transitions and different things. I, I, I discovered as you, as you uh, the different animations, that you can move things up, straight up, you can move them in either direction, you can have them bang, appear, you can have them float out, fade out, all the different, different things. Um, the issue of prophecy, I believe this is going to be how I taught the Hebrew epistles. In, as, we, as we set the table for the Hebrew epistles in our Through the Bible in Seven Hours, there's two groups in, in the nation of Israel. He came unto his own and his own received him not. There's the rejection of Israel and they stumble at that stumbling stone. But you've got the little flock as many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God, power to overcome the wrath to come and go on into the kingdom. And so the, the books of Hebrews to Revelation is prophecy fulfilled in God's word for the little flock and that future Jewish remnant. And those things, as you, as you teach through, as you summarize the books of Hebrews to Revelation, one of the things you see very clearly in the books of Hebrews to Revelation is the hope of the little flock doesn't change. It's still the issue of the kingdom. That is just a text box that where you, you, you click on and you open up a little window and you can type and then you enlarge, the, enlarge the, the font and you increase the size of the box and you put different colors in it and you, you make the point that way. The hope of the little flock didn't change. That's the books of, books of Hebrews to Revelation. Um, the dispensation of the grace of God. Again, different ways that you can work through those types of issues. Here's a, uh, an issue about the times of refreshing. Under the law program, the nation of Israel had remission of sins. Uh, repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for what? The remission of sins. Israel's forgiveness is different than ours because they're still under the law program. The new covenant isn't fully put in place until when? Until the second coming and the Lord Jesus Christ comes back to the earth 
and establishes that kingdom and the new covenant is fully in place and then what happens to Israel's sins? Israel's sins are blotted out. Acts chapter 3 verse 19. When the kingdom is established and um, the Lord Jesus Christ is reigning on earth, you know, in the book of Hebrews, He's made the first covenant old and it's ready to vanish. But, you, but, the, but the law is still in effect in the book of Hebrews. But when the, when the kingdom comes, then the law vanishes. See, the law is, is no longer... The issue of the new covenant is fully in place, you know, when? In the millennial kingdom. You have the transition from the old to the new covenant. So, I mean, you can teach different things. There's Acts 3, verses 19 through 21. Um, the issue of our forgiveness. The mystery was something that was unrevealed. And we today have what? Total forgiveness when? Right now. The nation of Israel's complete and total forgiveness and their sins blotted out are yet theirs in the kingdom. We have the forgiveness in Ephesians chapter number 1, verse 7, according to the riches of God's grace. So you can teach con uh, contrasts that way between the, you know, the dispensation of grace of God. Now, this is one of my favorite charts. How many, how many does, that make sense, does that make sense to you? <laughs> this, is the, this is my slide that if I want to take a piece and put it somewhere, I just copy and paste. It's all the individual pieces. There you see the dispensation of grace. You see the fall of Israel. You see the wrath up there. You see the cross. I want to put a cross in a slide. These are all the individual pieces. You just, you just latch onto it, cut and paste, and you can copy and move it to a different slide. But these are all the different pieces. It's all jumbled up because then you can go in and you can grab individual pieces as you, as you go through. I've also been teaching the book of Romans on Sunday morning. And so going through issues in the book of Romans uh, about how all of those terms are different, how redemption and propitiation and, and justification look at different things. The, tri the triangle is a shape that you, that you grab out of, the, out of the menu. You can enlarge it and put a text box in it. And, and the issue of God's love is seen where? At the cross. And the issue of redemption deals, it's the foundation of the gospel. It's sin being paid for. And sin is being paid for, and redemption accomplishes what? Propitiation. And God is satisfied with the payment that He's made. And because God is satisfied, man can be justified. And you see God's love demonstrated through the cross and the different aspects and how those terms work together to give a full picture of the issue of the cross. Here's another slide with those three terms, how those three terms... And this is, this is, by the way, right out of the Romans class. I remember Richard, as we're going through Romans chapter 3, uh, laying out how those terms work together. Oh, that's going to be the next one. Redemption pays the price. Propitiation satisfies God's justice. And then man can have a right standing to be declared righteous. Um, so you're working through all those, those different things there. Here's where the three terms work together. Redemption looks at sin and says sin is paid for. And because of redemption and sin's paid in full, God can forgive the sins and, and wipe the sins away. Redemption accomplishes propitiation. And propitiation looks at God and says God is satisfied and we have peace with God and now God's justice is free to respond positively. And because God is satisfied, now He's free to, to declare man righteous. Justification looks at man and says now man is righteous and holy and without blame before Him in love. So you can illustrate these, these different terms in a lot of different ways. Here is one that I created. What does that look like? It looks like a mess, doesn't it? Oh, that's the tabernacle. Uh, that's the, the, the Ark of the Covenant. And as I'm te I was actually able to create, however crudely, the image of the cherubim and the mercy seat. And the cherubim there, of course, the blood is sprinkled on the mercy seat. There's an opening. There's a window there. That's a, you, can, you can take a circle, make it oblong, put a white color to it, and it looks like you're looking right inside the Ark of the Covenant. Inside, there's the manna. There's the law, and there's Aaron's rod that budded, and the law's inside. And the Lord God in the Old Testament dwelled above the cherubim, right? And that's where he sees and communes with man in the Old Testament through the blood on that mercy seat. 
that covers the broken law, the blood covers the broken law inside the ark, a picture of propitiation. So that, that, you know, those are all different shapes and things that you, you work through in different ways. And of course, they had atonement and, and their reconciliation was happened again and again back there in the Old Testament. Some things in the book of Romans. The three individuals, Adam and Moses and Christ, in, uh, in Romans chapter number 5. In Adam, by Adam, sin, sin enters and death passed upon all. By Moses, sin worsens, the law, and guilt upon all. And notice the progression, you know, tying Adam and Moses and Christ with Romans 5.6, Romans 5.8, and Romans 5.10. By Jesus Christ, sin is conquered and grace is free to all who receive it. And um, Christ died for us. The issue of, in Romans chapter 5 as you're working through and teaching those three individuals there. The transition, Roman, the first five chapters of Romans deals with the issue of sins, plural, right? And there's the, there's the fruit, but Romans 6, 7, and 8 deals with the root. And so by Adam, we receive our nature. Romans chapter 6 is the answer to our nature problem because grace gives us a sense of freedom and a new nature, and we reckon ourselves to God as those that are alive from the dead. The answer to our sin nature and the root is not the law, Romans chapter 7. The law is not the answer. The law just makes sin worse, doesn't it? But the law is the strength of sin. And then Romans chapter 8, you see you got Moses and Adam and Moses and Christ. Romans chapter 8, it's all about the spirit of life that's where? In Christ Jesus. And now we're free from the law and we walk in the spirit. And as we do that, as we live in Romans, as we correctly understand Romans 6, Romans 7, and Romans 8, Romans 8, what happens to the issue of sin? Sin becomes less of a factor in our life and because our focus is positive on the, on the things of the Lord and our identity that are in Christ. So we do, do several things at, as I came into Romans chapter 6. The three words in Romans 6, know, reckon, and yield. And again, these are text box here. So we start out talking about the Lord Jesus Christ. The Lord Jesus Christ identified with us. He was in the form of God took upon the form of man, identified with us, but he, was, he identified so much with man that uh, he was numbered with who? The transgressors, went to the cross, died on the cross, was made sin for us, identifying he didn't, had no sin of his own to pay for, he paid for our sin, made sin for us, died on that cross, he was buried and put sin away, but he didn't remain in the grave. He was raised to walk in newness of life. He was raised unto God. Romans 6 goes on to say that uh, knowing that Christ being raised from the dead dieth no more. Death hath no more dominion over him. God drew a line at the resurrection and the association with the Lord Jesus Christ and sin and death was over with. And Lord Jesus Christ ascended at the Father's right hand and you, you track the Lord Jesus Christ and His death and His burial and His resurrection identified with us. Romans chapter 6 teaches that we are, what? Identified with Him, right? And so in Adam, we're dead in sin. But when we get saved, we're identified with Jesus Christ and our old man is crucified with Him. But not just crucified with Him, buried with Him, but not just buried with Him, raised with Him to walk in newness of life, and we cross that line too. And now we're to reckon ourselves to be dead indeed unto sin, and sin is, associated, is, is not part of our life any longer. And uh, He doesn't tell us to reckon sin dead, but reckon ourselves dead to it. And that we're on the other side of the death and the burial and the resurrection, and now we walk in newness of life. But not only we're, we're crucified, buried, and raised with Christ, but we're also what? seated with Him in heavenly places, and that's how God sees us there. And we are to know those things, we're to reckon those things, and we're to yield unto Him as a new creature in Christ. How you can take these terms and, and work right through those things with the, with the visual aids there. Um, those are just some things that I have um, worked through, the process of, uh, of time in doing those things. We have a slide. We can incorporate pictures. This is our welcome to folks as they come to Berean Bible Church every Sunday morning. Co picture of the congregation. 
Uh, we begin our services with a call to fellowship. We read a verse of scripture before we sing our songs. And so we instruct people to turn to, you know, whatever verse at the particular time. Um, 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 8, was this, pers- this was Easter Sunday that I used that passage that uh, Jesus Christ was raised from the dead according to my gospel. Of course, we use them for, for announcement time, talk about the, the future things coming up, the, the midweek services and so on. Um, this is our Great Lakes Grace Bible Conference. Brother Ed, do you want to say a few words? Where is he? There he is. <laughs> yeah, so we promote, you know, we promote the Bible conferences that way. Um, the Generation Next Retreat in June, so it's, you know, you, you present all the, the advertising. This has replaced our bulletin for us. It, I'm not saying that we, we just can't find anybody to do a bulletin, so this is just an easy way around that. <laughs> so, um, you know, so we do those types of things as well. So I've learned to do those, those different things with the, uh, with the process. Um, maybe I can show you just a, a brief second with this here. Um, I'm going to going to end the show. Here is a, a view of PowerPoint. You have the menu, because Richard asked me to, to show you kind of how these things work. The top, you have the different parts of PowerPoint. The, um, you, you click on the, the insert window. It drops down to several, you know, several options there. You go over to the shapes. Boom, there's all those shapes that you can play with. So I'm going to take the rectangle here, click on it, paste it there, and we have the shape. And then you take and you can stretch it out. Nope, I didn't do that right. There we go. And you can change the color, um, or you can put a text box in it. You can make it a little bit, see, this is how I drew the lines for the, uh, you know, for the chart and the different, different pieces there. Um, you go to the shapes, um, something like here. There's the little half circle that I use for the wrath to come. You paste it there. You give it a different color. You, you can uh, make it larger. You can make it taller. Nope, I didn't do that right. Let's see, let's go back. Try it again here, see if I can, there we go. You open it, you can, see, come on. Tell I'm not a computer guy. Let's see where it is, let's do it that way, there. You can open it up, change different sizes. You can spin things around, turn things, do all kinds of different things with it. And you, you just use your own creativity. The next thing I'm going to use, I'm going to teach through some of the ambassadorship stuff with the spirit, soul, and body. You can use the circles, you know, the spirit, soul, just like we did in the, in the school and use some of the same, um, same things. You can move the things in and out, the, the different, uh, different pieces. But... Um, I'm um, trying to think of maybe other things to show you here. There's, there's a text box. You just click there, and you begin to type. My, my computer is down there, but you can type in wrath to come, propitiation, justification, whatever. Change the font. Go on the home there. Uh, I guess you've got to have text in there to do it. Uh, there's the different, uh, different types of text you can use. Just all kinds of different options, change the font, change the color. Um, let's see if we can change that color for you. Um, let's see, where are we at? Um, it's, not, it's not looking the same for me when I'm seeing it on the screen there. Um, but anyway, you get the idea. I, I've learned all these things through time. But uh, w- one of the things that I've, I've tried to guard against is all the funny things, all the, the images and the changes in color and so on, I've had to catch myself because that's not the message. The, it's, it's the packaging for it, and it's still preaching, and it's still teaching the Word. And, and you can fall into the trap of the creativity and the, the, the design and the color and the, and the words and all those different things, but the ministry is still preaching. So I've really tried to scale back some of what I do and use this less and make the issue still preaching because you, because you can get so focused on the images and the, and the, and, and the pictures and the different things that, it be, it, that the preaching and the teaching be, ceases to become a living, breathing thing where you're dealing personally one-on-one. And that's something that I have I, I've recognized myself doing and, and trying to come back and, and realize, hey, the issue is not all the funny and the creative things that I can do with the images and the, and the pictures and the shapes and the colors but it's still the issue of preaching and teaching the word with the, with, with the congregation. So um, 
that is, uh, that is just kind of a pitfall. I do, not, I do not put the verses up, and I just use the references in the Sunday morning services. Uh, when we did through the Bible in seven hours, I did put verses on the screen because we had people that couldn't find the book of Romans. And then I'm not sure if they're even using, you know, our Bible. So you're, you want to be speaking and using the same terminology, especially when you're covering information rapidly. You still want them to be able to follow through with you. But then as we're giving them the material, I challenge them to go home and, and really spend some time and go back over the material. And the people that did profited from it. The people that just came week to week, you know, they're, they're keeping up with you, but you can see that it, it's not really clicking and, and, and uh, be resonating with them as it is with others who take the time to, to investigate and look at those things for themselves. Um, it was very profitable. Uh, I, I'll have this thing available for you if you want to actually see the notes and the different things that we used. Um, this is a little postcard that we, uh, we had 250 of these printed up on Vistaprint uh, for about 40 bucks, and we used these as personal invitations. People took handfuls of them and, and gave them to people in, at work, and, and we used them in the neighborhood. Uh, we used it, I used it with window customers. You know, I have 200 window customers that know I'm a pastor. Many of them got these. Um, several of them, a couple of them actually said, yeah, I'll put those out for other people to, uh, um, you know, just to, to publicize it and make it aware. But, um, but it was a, a, a great tool. Um, David has said that he would take, David Jordan, would take the presentation, the file, and make it available on the website. So if you want to have this material, you have to have a, a PowerPoint program in your computer to run it. But you could download it if you have the, I, I, as I understand it, the new ver, newer versions of PowerPoint will run the older versions, but the older versions won't run the newer versions. So, uh, you know, but, but you can do amazing things with it, and our folks have responded tremendously to it, and it's been, uh, it's been a great help and a great tool. As, uh, as you see the chart particularly, and use the chart as a reference point and, and open it up and make it, uh, uh, the, the visual aid is just, is just tremendous. And so even though I was drugged kicking and screaming to, uh, to use the computer, over the process of time have gotten more comfortable with it, I still hate this thing. <laughs> and uh, I, now I got all five kids in the same state who are all computer savvy and I'll call them with questions because I still have problems moving stuff around and copying and duplicating files and different things. Uh, one of the other things, I'll just use this um, um, in just the, uh, as, we, as we finish here. Um, where, is, where is that? Um, that's not what I want, what I want to do. Um, hmm. Oh, that's what, that's what I want to do. One of the other things that we have done, we just sang the song, is uh, Victory in Jesus. We're now putting the hymns up available. And this is not because, this is just to give the ministry a more modern flavor. We're still doing the ministry the old-fashioned way, but the, it, it, it's packaging it in more of a contemporary, modern, modern approach. One of the things you can do, we downloaded, my dear daughter Amy found a, a program online with, with 250 hymns that a church uses. And we downloaded that, and I picked from that, and I've been able to put together, you know, the, the basic songs that we use. One of the things that you can do with this is you can make the word changes in your, uh, in, in your hymn singing. This is, this is a change that we made in, the, uh, in, in our version of, of uh, victory in Jesus. Heard his precious blood's atoning, now being justified by faith, I've won the victory. And that's our own personal... Uh, slant to it. We've got another one that we used. Uh, then I cried, dear Jesus, come and heal my broken spirit. Now I've put the new man on. Um, here's the second verse that, that I thought was kind of neat. Uh, I've heard about his healing, of his cleansing power revealing. Now how we're dead to sin, alive to God, and how we should live free. And then I cried, dear Jesus, Romans 7, oh wretched man that I am, I'm crucified with Christ, not I, but Christ who lives in me. You can do those things and you don't have to print 47 books, you know, in your, uh, uh, you know, to, to distribute it. So we still have people that like to follow along in the hymn book anyway. 
because they like to watch the, the trail of the music and, and different things as well. Sorry, Marvin. I know you don't like it when I change when we change the words in some of the songs, but uh, we take a little. Yeah. Oh, okay. I know. I know. Uh, anyway, um, so I mean that's basically just some things that we have done. It's been been very profitable for us in our ministry. Do you have a question? Either about seven hours or some of the things that we've done here. Well, we, we did through the Bible in seven hours. Then we offered the, the eighth week, we offered an open form of question and answer. Um, and we had, uh, we met an hour, a half an hour early. We had pizza. We said, come for supper. We'll provide pizza. We had pop and, and we started about uh, seven o'clock. And we had a number of the people came. I gave the gospel once again and I stood and answered questions for an hour and a half. And uh, it was just thrilling. As we, as we work through those things. And uh, I've got a lot of good contacts now to follow up with. We, we turned it, gave them a three-by-five card, asked them for their permission because they said, we didn't invite you here to put you on a mailing list and start sending all kinds of information to you. But if you'd like more information or if you'd like a visit, um, you know, and, and got several good response cards back. So I've got follow-up that I can do now with, uh, with several new people in the area. Yes. Yeah. Yes. It's it's been very helpful. I, a hard lesson for me to learn is sometimes less is better, especially when you're dealing with new people that are trying to process all the information. We dump the whole load on and say, "Isn't that wonderful?" And then we hop to the next, you know, to the next slide or whatever. Or, and uh, so it just allows you. The book of Pro, uh, book of Isaiah talks about uh, precept upon precept, line upon line. Here a little, there a little. Yeah, the the hunger though it was amazing. We we went years down in Minerva, and uh, we try when when people would come in, we try not to swarm, you know. But when you get new blood and you're not used to it, it's ah good to see you, you know. <laughs> and uh, the the thrilling part, the, the the relocation of the ministry was a big step for us. We had some equity in our building that we sold, and that allowed us to purchase an, another facility. We actually purchased a kingdom hall. Uh, from the Jehovah, from a Jehovah Witness group, and uh, that had been for sale for about three years. They had modernized it and updated it inside. It's just beautiful, and and uh, but it being in a different area, we have people visiting now on a regular basis. In addition to our radio ministry and the different things that we're doing, um, it's just it's just really thrilling, and uh, we still swarm a little bit, but not as much as we used to. Well, yeah, we left Minerva because Minerva was a closed community and in our public publicizing the, the seven hours, we had two families from Minerva that drove to Louisville to attend seven hours through the Bible. So uh, that, was, that was interesting. But uh, had a guy who was an, an adult Sunday school teacher um, in, a, in a denominational church. He still hasn't told me what church it is, but he'd seen Les Feldig on, on the TV. He says, are you familiar with Les Feldig? I said, yeah, yeah. You know, and he was there several times, and uh, we just have a, an open door to have further contact with him. It's just uh, just a great thing. Yes. Did you just put an ad to classify? I'm sorry. Did you put an ad to classify? Yes. We um, we advertised in several different. Uh, we advertised in what's called the Mister Thrifty in our area. That's the paper that's sent out with everybody's trying to sell used cars or an apartment to rent or you know job wanted that kind of thing. We also paid and put up paid ads in the local newspaper, in the Louisville Herald, the Canton Repository, and other things. We advertised it on our radio program and uh, got responses from all three of those different areas, those three different avenues. Uh, this notebook, um, by the time we spent $2 a piece for the binder and then did all the copying, I have a window customer that I've had a long-time relationship with. They gave us a break on the photocopying. Uh, this book we produced for about for less than six dollars, and we gave them away. We say we have something we want to share with you, and, and the, you know we consider it outreach for the local church and our ministry. And we you know we just said call us and let us know you're coming. So we have your name because we gave everybody name tags, 
and made these things available to them. And uh, the response was just wonderful. People were interested in seeing the Bible. And there's, there, was a, there was a common theme that people had, had knew the Bible, they knew the stories, but the idea of seeing it all put together was a fascinating thing to them. How much lead time did you have over there? Um, uh, about three weeks. And we did this. Something else that we did, we, we did it two ways, uh, two things that we did. We did it on Thursday night because we didn't want to conflict with other midweek services and other, other churches. I mean, we had people from all different denominational things. And we found that there were people that had other commitments that came on Thursday night because it was a different night, even though they went to church someplace else on Wednesday nights. The other thing that we did is we did it the end of February is when we started. Cabin fever. After the holidays die down, people are still inside, and we wanted to finish before the weather really broke in the Easter season and people are out doing yard work and, and different things. So we did it. Um, we promoted it through the month of January. Uh, well, about, about, about the, you know, we started promoting it first part of February, began the series the end of February, and, uh, and, and ran it through. We, our goal was to get through before Easter, thinking that maybe some folks would come to our Easter service, having you know, been, a, been exposed to the ministry and met our people and, and, uh, and you know, were comfortable with us. Uh, due to the weather, we had a lot of bad weather this year, even in, oh, there went my, uh, oh, it just went to sleep, okay. Uh, so I guess we're done with, with, oh, there it is, it came back. Um, no, I forgot what I was saying. Uh, oh, yeah, we, um, we had bad weather, so we were late in starting. We were pushed into April, no, pushed into March, which then pushed, pushed, pushed us into Holy Week, <laughs> you know, Palm Sunday and all that. So the last couple of weeks, attendance dropped off a little bit because people had other places that they were going and other commitments and responsibilities. But it was just a wonderful thing. It, it energized our people because of our relocation. We had newer folks, our folks, to get Right Division systematically in six or seven weeks to go through the whole chart Time passed, but now, ages to come, Old Testament, four Gospels, Book of Acts, Paul's epistles, Hebrew epistles. It was valuable for our people. You know, you, you try to get people to come for Sunday school for six or seven weeks or, you know, even the morning service is, uh, but they came for this. And uh, we, several of our new folks uh, says, you've made the Bible exciting again, you know. And th these are folks that had been, become a part of our ministry and uh, it was, it's just been, been terrific. And thrilling, and uh, it's been the, our, our relocation and our move was uh, was a tr very traumatic thing for us, a big step for the ministry uh, to make. But it was a, a very positive thing, and we have a, a nice facility all on one level now. We did some remodeling in it. We we borrowed money, uh, and plus the equity we had in our previous building. When all the dust settled financially, we're on the hook for about the same amount per month, with a little money in the bank as a cushion to do you know, whatever, and uh, it's just been a real exciting thing in the, in the ministry, and uh, things are going real well. If you'd like to look through, look through this, uh, I have a copy of it here, and uh, you're w more than willing to look at that if you like, okay? Anything else? Okay. Okay, thank you, Brother Ted. Fascinating, isn't it?